Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about dilated cardiomyopathy. Already we have discussed about the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy in the previous video. Now let's discuss about the dilated cardiomyopathy. What you can see here is clearly that the four chambers, all the chambers of the heart are pathologically dilated. Okay, so that's why it is called as the dilated cardiomyopathy. All the four chambers, let me write here, all four chambers are dilated okay this is the dilated cardiomyopathy what's the reason okay what's the etiology let me write here so the etiology of this dilated cardiomyopathy include the number one reason is alcohol and this was a question which was previously asked and the other reasons includes the viral myocarditis So it's, a, it's the infection of the myocardium. So myocardium will be inflamed. It's not going to contract properly. That will lead to the uh, that will lead to the pumping defect. So which will lead to uh, congestion that will cause the dilation of the chambers of the heart. So alcohol, viral myocarditis, and can you tell me what is the virus that is going to cause the viral myocarditis? Most common associated with the viral myocarditis, it's the parvovirus B19. Okay, and even viruses like HHV six. Okay, so viruses like HHV six and Coxsackie B virus. So these viruses are associated with the viral myocarditis. Not only that, the other reasons which can lead to the dilated cardiomyopathy include hemochromatosis and sarcoidosis. Hemochromatosis and granulomatous disorders like sarcoidosis okay see both these disorders they can lead to dilated cardiomyopathy as well as restrictive cardiomyopathy but dilated cardiomyopathy is much more common when compared to the restrictive cardiomyopathy remember that this hemochromatosis and sarcoidosis can lead to both restrictive as well as dilated cardiomyopathy and the other reasons includes Duchenne's muscular dystrophy Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Remember that Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is due to absence of a peripheral protein which is called the dystrophin. And the important points about the Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is the pseudo calf hypertrophy is going to be seen. The Gover sign is going to be seen. I'm just trying to integrate. Okay. So Duchenne's muscular dystrophy is going to cause the dilated cardiomyopathy. True. And the other conditions like the usage of the drugs like adriamycin or doxorubicin doxorubicin so adriamycin and doxorubicin and drugs like cocaine okay cocaine and states like pregnancy See, all these conditions which I have shown over here, the alcohol, viral myocarditis, hemochromatosis, sarcoidosis, usage of the drugs and states like pregnancy, in all these conditions, there is a possibility that a person can develop the dilated cardiomyopathy. Now, what is the problem with the dilated cardiomyopathy? What happens if the heart size increases? It's good, right? It is like more and more dilated, it will accumulate more blood and it will give more cardiac output. No, definitely not. See, when the heart is pathologically dilated, too much dilated, that's not good. Why? Because too much dilation will affect the systole, will affect the contraction of the heart. Normally, according to the Frank Starling law, if you stretch the myocardium, the more powerfully it will contract. The more you stretch, the more powerfully it will contract. That's under the physiological limits. But now, too much pathological dilation is not good. So, the problem here in dilated cardiomyopathy is systolic dysfunction so the contraction of the heart is not going to happen properly because of the pathological dilation and upon microscopy what you can see is there will be myocyte hypertrophy okay myocyte hypertrophy can be seen and some amount of interstitial fibrosis can also be seen okay so these are the points which i want you to know next what are the complications? The complications
complications because of the dilated cardiomyopathy. See, when the heart chambers are getting pathologically dilated, now the heart chambers are getting dilated like this, right? So, whenever this is happening, whenever the left ventricular cavity is dilating like this, what happened to the valve leaflets, mitral valve leaflets and on the right side tricuspid valve leaflets? These leaflets are also moving away from each other. Okay, whenever they are moving away from each other, do you think they will close properly? No, they will not close properly. Now, these valve leaflets are separated apart from each other, so they do not close properly. Whenever they do not cause, what happens? During systole, there will be mitral regurgitation as well as the tricuspid regurgitation. So, the complications include mitral regurgitation as well as tricuspid regurgitation. Okay, mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation and there is a possibility of arrhythmias also. So, arrhythmias can also be seen. What is the treatment? For dilated cardiomyopathy, there is no treatment, it is a transplant. Okay, so heart transplant is the option which is available for the dilated cardiomyopathy. Now, let us discuss about a special variant of dilated cardiomyopathy. Variant of dilated cardiomyopathy. What is the special variant called as? It is called as Takot Subo cardiomyopathy. Okay, it's called as a Takot Subo cardiomyopathy. See, what happens in this Takot Subo cardiomyopathy? When the person is under extreme stress, okay, extreme psychological stress. Okay, extreme psychological stress. For example, there is this mother who lost her baby, a mother who lost her son or the father who lost her daughter in some road accident or whatsoever. Now, whenever there is extreme psychological stress, now this extreme psychological stress is going to activate the sympathetic nervous system and there will be excessive release of the catecholamines. Now, this catecholamines, this elevated levels, the too much amount of catecholamines will act on the left ventricle or the left ventricular cavity. So, there will be enlargement of the left ventricular cavity. Okay. So, there will be dilated left ventricular cavity. One thing, uh, left ventricular cavity is going to be dilated and that left ventricular cavity do not contract. Okay. There will be stunning. There will be stunning of the left ventricular cavity. Now, this dilation of the left ventricular cavity, this dilation will look in such a way, it is, look like, it is looking like a tokosubo. So, what exactly is a tokosubo? It is a Japanese trap. Okay, it is a Japanese word. It is it's a trap used to catch the octopus. Okay, here you can clearly see there is this octopus and it is getting trapped inside a jar like thing. There is this jar which is used to trap the octopus. Now, why we are uh, comparing this jar with our uh, dilated cardiomyopathy or Takotsubo cardiomyopathy is because, see, now this jar, this Takotsubo, it exactly, see, our heart is also exactly resembling like the Takotsubo, okay. So, the point which I want to put into your mind is, this is a normal heart. But in Takotsubo cardiomyopathy, what happens? The left ventricle is going to be dilated, it is going to be stunned. And this dilated ventricle, it appears, it looks like a Tokotsubo, which is a Japanese trap for an octopus. And remember, Tokotsubo cardiomyopathy is an example of dilated cardiomyopathy. Tokotsubo cardiomyopathy is seen, is also called as broken heart syndrome. Okay, the one more point. This Tokotsubo cardiomyopathy is also called as broken heart syndrome. Why it is called as broken heart syndrome? Whenever there is a heartbreak, like listening to uh, uh, someone who, like you know, listening to someone like uh, dead. Okay, your close one, if, you, if they are dead, definitely there will be a heartbreak and that will lead to excessive psychological stress with the release of the catecholamines that will lead to the dilation of the left ventricular cavity. Okay, so Takot Subo cardiomyopathy is also completed. Now, after this, let us discuss about the restrictive. Restrictive cardio myopathy. See, there is some restriction. Restriction to what? Restriction to filling. See, why there is restriction to filling? Because of the fibrosis. 
due to restriction to filling that is due to the fibrosis okay now the number one point which i want you to know is in this condition see in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy the left ventricular cavity size is going to be narrowed in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy the left ventricular cavity size is going to be narrowed okay the banana shaped cavities in dilated cardiomyopathy dcm the left ventricular cavity size is going to be increased but in restrictive cardiomyopathy the very important point is left ventricular cavity size is going to be normal okay left ventricular cavity size is going to be normal but if you look at the atria atria size okay is going to be enlarged that is the important point the left ventricular cavity size is going to be normal but the atria are going to be dilated okay now what exactly is the problem in restrictive cardiomyopathy in restrictive cardiomyopathy in rcm let me write there is a decreased okay in restrictive cardiomyopathy there is a decreased complaints of left ventricular left ventricle okay there is a decrease in complaints of the left ventricle normally during diastole what should happen the left ventricle should relax and it should receive the blood it should receive the preload or end diastolic volume now in this condition the left ventricular complaints this left ventricular complaints or the relaxation is going to be affected why left ventricle is not relaxing properly because inside the left ventricle some amount of fibrosis is happening so anything which causes the deposition of abnormal materials into the left ventricle or into the walls of the left ventricle will affect the left ventricular complaints or will affect the left ventricular relaxation see now left ventricle is not relaxing so tell me what is the problem is it a systolic dysfunction or diastolic dysfunction so diastolic dysfunction mainly so in restrictive cardiomyopathy there is restriction for filling during diastole okay so that's why it is called as diastolic dysfunction because the problem with the restrictive cardiomyopathy is diastolic this function diastolic dysfunction now if you ask me what are the causes what are the etiologies okay of restrictive cardiomyopathy why fibrosis is happening in which conditions see the reasons are amyloidosis it's the amyloid deposition abnormal materials are getting deposited within the left ventricle so the left ventricle is not relaxing properly amyloidosis you already know hemochromatosis hemochromatosis or sarcoidosis i have already taught you hemochromatosis and sarcoidosis they will mainly cause the dilated cardiomyopathy but they can also lead to restrictive cardiomyopathy and conditions like endo cardial fibroelastosis In the name itself is there the endocardial fibrosis fibroelastosis is happening uh, is seen in syndromes like loffler syndrome and it can be seen in conditions like uh, post radiation fibrosis So these are the conditions. So what are the causes of the restrictive cardiomyopathy? The causes of the restrictive cardiomyopathy includes amyloidosis, hemochromatosis, sarcoidosis, post-radiation fibrosis, endocardial fibroelastosis, Loeffler syndrome. In all these conditions, the patient can develop the restrictive cardiomyopathy. And the main problem with the restrictive cardiomyopathy is the diastolic dysfunction. Okay, diastolic dysfunction. The left ventricle is not relaxed. Sorry, the ventricles are not relaxing properly. Not just the left ventricle, even the right ventricle. Even right ventricle is going to be most commonly affected when compared to the uh, left ventricle. so it's a diastolic dysfunction there is a restriction okay the there is restriction for the filling so that's why it's a diastolic dysfunction okay so with this even the restrictive cardiomyopathy is also completed upon biopsy there is no need to say the entire uh, biopsy is going to show the fibrosis okay along with the cardiomyocytes there will be too much amount of fiber deposition so that's that's what's going to be seen on the biopsy so with this
we have completed the dilated cardiomyopathy as well as the restrictive cardiomyopathy. So, with this, we have completed hypertrophic as well as dilated as well as restrictive cardiomyopathy. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.